Coffee Carmen Connection is about being human. It's about you choosing to prioritize your well-being, putting the time in to strengthen your resilience to adversity, and being part of a community that holds you accountable and offers support when the going gets tough. Our podcasts bring expert insight and real life experiences together for you to enjoy and learn what it is that makes us human and how to work with it. Good morning, Jade, and thank you so much for joining me today on Coffee, Calm and Connections podcast. I'm really excited to have you here. And I think what you've got to talk about is going to be really interesting to people listening. So just before I let you introduce yourself, you know, I'm really grateful for the time we've spent together. And I think we're very mentally aligned in direction where we're going and what we want from life. And you've had quite an interesting backstory, haven't you? Sort of Mm. medical things have followed you through (laughs) life choices of I'm going to do this and then that falls through for one reason or another those kind of things seems it seems to be a bit of a pattern do you want to give us an intro to you who you are where you are now and we can discuss your life story okay sounds good uh yeah so I'm Jaden I'm now 33 uh and yes you're right I have had a very interesting life so far and I can gratefully say that medically now touch wood I am very healthy and very grateful for that and very unique with the condition that obviously we're going to cover that I was born with in the sense that I am less than one percent of the people with my condition to have a pretty normal life quite normal obviously um (laughs) so yes I'm very lucky and very grateful but that I think a lot of it is through my own determination as well as just luck shall we say mindset in my opinion (laughs) well it's what makes luck Mm -hmm. so uh, and actually that's a lot about what we talk about on these podcasts and through the coffee calm connection platform is about how do you become in control of your own mindset and some of the things you have to do there are to break down the predefined sort of Mm. lenses through which you see the world and and uh, and that's what I find so interesting about talking to people uh, on these kind of podcasts so do you want to give us a, a sort of a run through of sort of the major point turning points in your life maybe yes so uh, I mean initially I suppose people would like to know what what I was born with I was born with a condition called uh, bladder extrophy and simply that means in Greek I believe the bladder on the outside so unfortunately just in the womb the the skin for some reason forms under the bladder rather than over it like a a normal baby and that just basically simply means once I was born I obviously had to have it all reconstructed and and popped (laughs) popped back where I should be (laughs) and unfortunately it also meant that my pelvis was a little bit it it basically wasn't sitting how it should be and and they literally break the pelvis and, and put it back to how it should be which I'm very grateful to say, obviously, I was a baby. I have no memory of this whatsoever. And it was a lot tougher on my mum, of course. She was very young. She was only 19. And yeah, and she always joked because the first time I had that operation, it should have been a one-time thing, having the pelvis broke, pop it back together, all good. But I could not sit still as a baby, even a newborn baby would not sit still. So unfortunately, I broke my own pelvis again after the first surgery and the doctors they said they obviously did it again like kind of glued it back together and had to literally wedge me in to get me to heal and my mum said just from that point onwards she just knew I was gonna have tons of energy and uh sort of be a bit of a a rebel shall we say wow as a mum of three children three very active children I cannot even imagine the pain and the worry your mum must have gone through trying to make this tiny baby just just be still sit still for just a few weeks (laughs) but yes of course babies don't have a clue (laughs) no so is the condition now fixed or do you still have some long-term implications in the sense of day-to-day life right now as a, a a reasonably young adult you wouldn't really know like I said I am very very lucky some people unfortunately are not as lucky it can impact them with medication further surgery the the only long-term condition is that I have one kind of like fun- functional kidney the other one is still in there because it's not ever caused any trouble to have it removed but it basically doesn't do anything so I just have to drink a lot of water which is obviously good everybody should but you know other than that I don't drink much alcohol either, just 
a bit more strained than maybe the average person. But So talk to me about, because I know when you were in your sort of mid-teens, you mm-hmm. were told that you'd have to be on medication for your whole life and would um, need to keep your stoma, but you decided... I hear what you said, Mr. Doctor, and I yes. fundamentally disagree, and therefore I'm going to do it this way. Tell us about that. <laughs> so I was taking medication pretty much from day one. Unfortunately, lots of kidney uh, and bladder infections. So that's what destroyed one of the kidneys. So it was I understood as a like a proper youngster that I needed to take those medications. But as I got older, I was just yeah very rebe- rebellious, and I just stopped taking them without him my mom she obviously eventually does know that and was not happy but anyway i had my what i would say was my life said changing surgery so the bladder is very small and the operation that changed my life is they use part of the bowel to make the bladder bigger so that it has the capacity to obviously hold a more normal mouth you know liquid we um, <laughs> we yeah no polite way of saying that and um <laughs> Yes, so I had that surgery, but obviously for the bladder to recover from that, I had a stoma, so a tube through the stomach so that it could drain. And they basically said that I would never be able to, the muscles of the the bladder wall and the new kind of bladder wall would never be strong enough to, you know, go to the toilet like everybody else. So basically like squeeze. The the doctor said, you're never going to be able to do that. You're going to have to have a, a stoma. And I was like, uh, I'm I'm just not having that. Like, imagine being told at like 15 that you every time you got to go swim in, you everybody's going to see. It. I was just like, this is not this is not going to be my life. Like, just no. So I argued it. My mum was very good. She always went with what I when I when I said no, she was like, right, no. He said no. Like, this is it. So we told the doctors, no, this isn't happening. This is not going to be my life. So the second option, and this is probably TMI, but I had to learn to self catheterize Trust me, that is one of the most painful things to try and learn to do. Wow. Uh, But once you learn, it's obviously normal. But again, I, you know, as a teenager, I didn't want to have to take catheters everywhere I went. So I just stopped and tried to go like everybody else. And it was absolutely fine. My doctor didn't believe me that this was possible. He was like, no one's done it. This isn't possible. You've got to stay in for like a week and like basically prove that I was normal, quote, normal. So yeah, off me and my mom went to London again and uh, yeah, proved my point and touch wood, not something I have to do and I live a pretty normal life in that sense. But That's incredible. Yeah. So I'm quite interested in this rebellious streak. <laughs> yes, <laughs> some uh, of the favours. Well, yeah, absolutely. Tell me, tell me more because I can see obviously from a medical perspective – uh, you've gone, yeah, heard what you said, and I'm I'm not going there. But mm-hmm. I think you've done that through several different iterations mm-hmm. of life, of uh, whether it's with parents, whether it's in, in in job roles, and where that's brought you to now is quite interesting in terms of your your the path you're currently on. Do you want to talk mm-hmm. to us a bit about that? Yeah, what well, in the sense of, you know, most people would say, obviously, the entrepreneur road is a very I suppose it's a risky one, but it's a scary one. It's putting yourself out there. You know, not not a lot of people like to do that. And I suppose we all come from different families. Families like mine are very, very private, very quiet. Wouldn't imagine posting themselves on YouTube, to put it that way. So, yeah, being being a rebel, I I mean, I, I wasn't in the sense of, you know, I never got in trouble with the police. I was good in school. So it was rebel, rebelling on my own terms, if that makes sense. If it suited me, then I would. I wasn't just one of those typical children that just got up to no good. Mm. It was, yeah. But I think talk, it's, talk to oh. me about what you think the mindset is there because because I recognise some of my personal traits in, in <laughs> you through the conversations yeah, that we've had similar. previously. And, it, and it's awesome. But what I'm interested in, you say rebelling on your own terms. So for me, the way I think about my own uh, my own personality is not necessarily rebelling, but this need to prove to me mm-hmm. I can do it, whatever it is. And that can be a bit of a double-edged sword. It means I do get places where, you know, perhaps I wouldn't otherwise, mm-hmm. but it causes quite a lot of stress, anxiety. You mentioned yes. the entrepreneurial road being quite... Uh, a difficult one how does what I've said how do you how does that relate to you yeah I can definitely agree with that because maybe like you you were told 
you can't you can't do as much you know you've got you've got to be careful you've got to take things easy typically i didn't want to and i i felt like i had a point to prove like you said and that did carry on throughout all of my life you know school i struggled because i wasn't there as much so i had a point to prove to do extra well should we say which it didn't quite turn out but um, <laughs> <laughs> entrepreneur it is but um <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I think maybe that's what led me to the entrepreneur thing because it was ability to control. Like I, I can create my own path, so to speak, and I can be as determined as I want. But yes, you're right; it does cause a lot of a lot of trouble around you. You know, especially with like close relationships and your own personal stress and anxiety levels. You know, when I was in my last relationship, it was hard to find that balance to spend time with her when I just wanted to work and I heard your recent podcast when it's really hard when you do just want to do the cleaning or you want to do your emails and there's people waiting that want to spend time with you but you're like I'm on a mission like I've got to do this I find that really interesting statement because um, and obviously from the last podcast you you will have heard Mm. this but it's this particularly when with COVID and lockdown what can I control? And Mm -hmm. then I get way over the top on it. And it almost then controls me. Mm. It's almost like a false sense of I'm controlling my work. No, no, no. My work is controlling me because it's my go-to. And there's like a compulsive need behind me to keep going Mm -hmm. way belong, way past the the sort of point of exhaustion or, or, you know, anxiety breakdown or whatever it might be. Yeah. I think you've just got to find that balance and and that's something I learned a little bit too late in the sense of maybe some personal relationships got sabotaged in the process but it's never too late to yeah force yourself to take some time for yourself and how does it affect you when you're on your mission (laughs) uh to prove whatever point you've got to prove Mm -hmm. and you don't prove it and the two particular things in your life that I'm talking about Mm. are you mentioned about your GCSE results in a yeah. previous conversation, but also about your or your army plans. Mm, the army plans. What were they? How did it affect you when it didn't go the way you wanted it to? So the GCSEs, I think I was lucky my parents were aware that I might struggle. There was never any pressure to do well. They wouldn't have ever been disappointed, so to speak, in me. And I always got the compliment, a oh, nice effort, like you did your best effort. And that was sometimes a little bit of a kick in the face because it was like, I put everything into it and it was still rubbish. And it was something you had to kind of, you know, just get over. But yes, the the army one was huge because at a very young age, I decided that I wanted to be in the army. That was, that was all I wanted. I didn't, I didn't see anything else for myself. And I told my mum and I told my doctor, like that was what I was going to be. My doctor straight away was like no you're not like there's how like you're basically delusional like how is this gonna happen um and I was like it's gonna happen I was just straight you know you know quite boisterous in the sense of I was quiet but I was like no this is gonna happen I was just when I saw something for me it was gonna happen I you know I kind of had that visualization at a young age but anyway cutting a long story short I jumped forward to when I was old enough to apply I believe the first time was around 17 16 17 and of course I got my medical failed I was still having a lot of surgeries for my for my bladder condition so they recommended that I got all those done come back and yeah fourth time later the the third time sorry was when I as you know had my my fractured spine so I was ready to sign up I was buzzing I'd proved my point that my bladder condition was nothing to get in the way I was very lucky the recruitment sergeants were backing me all the way they're like he's not going to be any different you know somebody else might have surgery for something else like an injury like it's no different if he has to suddenly have an operation like we'll cope with it they loved my determination obviously that's what soldiers are made of uh, so yeah I was very lucky that they wanted me so they backed the, the medical and I passed it and I smashed it yeah and I was I was out training or like getting my fitness in top notch I was a little bit underweight that was their only concern I was a skinny lad I always had been 
so like you know get working out get fit get your cardio up I don't know why I used to love climbing trees as a kid and I thought yeah I'm just gonna climb trees you know like mix it up can only run for so long and yeah I just decided to leap out the tree and unfortunately completely miscalculated the height that I was at and landed landed on my feet but my my spine collapsed basically under under the the gravity of the of the floor and that was 2021 were you I was just coming up to my 21st birthday yes so out that went the third application um recovered about three years of that 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 was a long recovery in the sense of like completely 100% could apply again do you know what I mean without it and again I got told you know life's gonna be difficult for you you might not even be able to walk as well as you, you used to blah blah I was like yeah okay like you just keep those thoughts to yourself like I'm out of it <laughs> and um yeah again my determination I you wouldn't even know put it that way touch with that I have a fractured my spine like mm. there's no way of knowing so yeah fourth time I was like I am getting in this army like n- like I was sensible I was you know didn't climb any trees I've climbed a tree again put it that way <laughs> you know got my fitness up to like its peak on my way I was so close to like literally going into training and I got told I had asthma and as most people know you cannot go in the army with asthma and gutted so yeah that was hard and that was when I hit what most people find is just a, a lost path I had that was all I knew that's all I knew I wanted to do I was happy to work any sort of like rubbish job in between because I didn't care I was focused to where I was going I just needed to pay my bills yeah and I that's... was completely lost for obviously a few years after that because I think that's um tell me if if you can if you're mm. if you're happy to what that period was like because I've spoken to an awful lot of people that through lots of different reasons have lost their way and they're Mm -hmm. kind of drifting isn't really the right word but some people find that they are drifting some people find that they are going a hundred miles an hour in no direction Mm -hmm. um or stuck completely or just stuck, stuck. and yeah. what that does to you as a human being to your drive to your motivation to your mm-hmm. bil- ability to sleep to your self-belief talk to me about that that period in your life and how how you dealt with that yeah I definitely went through some dark periods in life after, you know that wasn't the only reason but around after sort of 21 years old and because I'm now quite spiritual I see it as that it was a challenge to basically wipe out what was already a bit of a shaky foundation or just wipe out all that rubbish all that hardship and be able to rebuild on like a completely flat strong surface so I'm grateful for those challenges as much as obviously some of them are, are very difficult to reflect on but I also think for people that have gone through such times you're like a different kind of human you you know you're you can inspire so many people and help other people that are currently going through it and I wish I had reached out more to people when I was in the current and I think that's probably been a big reason why I suddenly chose this journey of helping other people and and I feel I don't believe in God so to speak but I very much believe in in like the universe and that we're directed and guided and I think I wasn't meant to be in the army as much as that would have been a great career and you know I would have served the country I think I had a bigger like bigger purpose in a way not 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 in comparison but just a different purpose should I say and yeah and just helping people I think that's incredible I think that's really incredible and what you've just said there about being open being vulnerable and helping people that's that is the big driver behind Coffee, Calm and Connection mm-hmm. because I believe strongly, uh, having always been somebody that wears my heart on my sleeve, mm-hmm. I believe sometimes to my detriment, often to my detriment, uh, what am I saying? Um, <laughs> but I do believe that that openness, that vulnerability, that transparency is not unique to me or to you or to John down the road. Mm-hmm. But every single one of us goes through periods in life where we feel anxious or stressed or down or lost or 
ecstatically and overwhelmingly happy. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, we all have emotions. And I listened to a really interesting uh, TED talk from Alan Watkins, and I think mm-hmm. he's incredible. And I'd highly re- recommend anybody go and listen to him. And what he's saying is there are 34,000 different emotions. Wow. And you have the sort of the main planets of emotions, mm-hmm. happiness, sadness, anger, But around those planets orbit so many other different emotions. Mm. And actually, if you, I think you're quite a visual person as well. (laughs) Visualizing that helped me because if you can figure out which planet you're on, if you can really (laughs) do some sort of self analysis on which planet you're on, you can direct where you want to go. And one of the things about listening to stories like yours is that we can start to pull out themes. Oh, I felt like that oh, so that's what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. And I think that social proofing, but also realizing we are all essentially the same in terms of, you know, how we work. We've all got the same sort of emotions and we all, uh, you know, basically run in the same way. It Mm -hmm. just helps. It helps you reflect a little bit back on on yourself and your own uh, sort of inner turmoil or not, as the case may be. So I think it's really, really interesting. Do you want to tell us a little bit about refusing to be mediocre, where you're at with that? Yeah. Uh, the, and, and yeah, tell people, because, you know, I'm sure it'd be very interesting for lots of people. Yeah, as you can obviously tell from the, the name, it is very based on my life story that I was refusing to be anything less than average because purely I'd been told I would be less than average anyway so I wasn't even going to settle for being just an average guy I was like no I'm going to go one step per- like further and yeah so I created the brand name I took some time starting it I will admit that was due to various reasons but yeah the, the mission really of it is to help other people create a life that's very much that serves them better and, and one that you know inspires them and they're excited about but also one of healing it and and recovering from any sort of trauma like you said you know so many of us go through different stories but a lot of them have the same sort of theme and the same outcome and I think people need that connection and that's why I really liked your your name because I think we can all help each other and I think if everybody helped each other we'd all be a lot less (laughs) messy (laughs) (laughs) that's my favorite saying of this podcast if everybody helped each other we'd all be less messy yeah brilliant couldn't put it better (laughs) myself uh what I will do is if you can send me the link to your YouTube channel I'll make sure it appears in the show notes for this podcast Mm -hmm. anybody who wants to follow you can do so easily yeah awesome I think that's been really interesting, Jade, and thank you so much for sharing okay. your story with us. <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. Your reviews, shares, and followership is incredibly valuable to us. If you'd like to know more about our work through Coffee, Calm, and Connection and how we can support you, please email us at hello at coffeecalmconnection.org or follow us on social media. Thank you. Thank you.